Let's go into Object Orient Programming. The main concept are classes, and the class can capture domain knowledge. So if we define a class, could capture some domain knowledge in this class. So let's say a class vehicle, and this vehicle has a certain speed. So let's set it to, to zero. And perhaps there's other information about the domain. So maybe the price and there can be others. Now, why would you capture this domain knowledge? Because with Python, you can make objects using these classes. So you could say um, Honda is a vehicle and the car has a certain speed. So let's say 100 and certain price. So what we did here is define an object using the domain or the class vehicle and then we can set variables specific for that object. Now we can output these variables and if you run this you'll see this object contains these two values that we set before. You can make multiple objects and so you could define another object here and the object can have its own variables again. And if you'd like you can also output this information. So now we have two objects. First one we created and the second one with their own variables. Now what we do here is to set the variables separately, but we also can set variables immediately using a concept called constructor. So a constructor is simply a method or a function that's called when the object is created. We can define it in this way and you'll see that if you would run this, this is the constructor. The object is created twice, we create two objects. And so when creating an object, the constructor is always called. And we can use the constructor to initialize variables. So if we set here speed and price, we can set the object's name now, because we want the, the object itself, we have to use the self word, which refers to the object, because for one vehicle, the variables are different than the other. And let's say these are attributes. So put an A there if you want. So this will set the object speed using the constructor. And we also set the price. Now what we can do is simply write it like this. And it will otherwise be the, be the same. So if you run it, see we made a typo here. So if you run this code, you'll see the variables are still set inside the constructor. So that will save you some lines of code in, in the constructor. You can immediately set objects. And so these are default um, objects. Now you can create all, all kind of domain knowledge. So it doesn't have to be a vehicle. You can have a class for any kind of um, domain you can think of. So it could be a book, let's say, or it could be something more advanced. Any kind of domain knowledge you can save and use using classes. And so in this case let's say YouTube and a video has a certain number of views and perhaps also 
uh, certain amount, a certain title, and it can be other variables. So then we can create a new video, and you can set the title and the and the views, and perhaps you have other variables here as well, like the author, and you can create as many objects as you want using a certain class. So in this case we have five objects and if you define a constructor you can immediately give the objects values. So we'll do it like this. Let's say same order. Doesn't actually matter which order you do it, but you can use the same order order for uh, convenience. So then we just assign these these variables to the objects, and just for simplicity, let's keep one object. Say we have 200 views, the author is, I don't know, some guy, and then you have a title. Okay, so that's how you would create objects. So you can have several objects, one, two, three, hundred, thousands, doesn't really matter. And you can have several classes throughout your program. So you can have objects of different types. So that's the basic objects. Now inside the class you can also define methods. And the methods or the functions will be applied to the objects. So if you define a function here, or a method, let's say uh, show, and we add the self because we wanted to apply to the words. And let's say we just print the title. Now we can call this method on the object and it will show the object title. So run this and you'll see the object title here. And you can also use show other variables. So perhaps you want to show the author or the views, whichever variables, objects variables you want. And in this case it's a string, so show it as a string. And there you go. Okay, you can have several objects, so you can define more objects if you want. And uh, some other title. Perhaps they have different view amounts. So. And on those objects, you can call the same method, but now it will use the object variables. And so objects variables are unique for the objects. So you'll see they have different values because that's how we gave them to the constructor. And doesn't really matter in which order they are created so if you want you can change the order and it will be exactly the same okay so that's that's methods now you can also have methods that uh, return some some text or some variables so you could have uh, get get views let's say and that simply returns the number of views for the object. And then we could say get views on any object, so it could be the third one. And you could output that or whatever you want to do with the object variable. So you can use you can specify certain domain knowledge inside a class and can have certain variables for that domain and certain methods that can be applied to these variables and if you want you can also initialize the the, the variables inside the 
the, the um, constructor. Now, one thing you can do is to change the variables of, a of an object outside of the class definition. And so let's say we do some joke here and we say the views is 1000 for all of the objects. Now run it and you'll see the all of the views are 1000 because we changed the value outside of the class. So that's the basic idea of the of the objects and classes inside Python.